Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at 1 a.m. in the Mizorni on this December 9th, 2023, I decided to talk to y'all for just a moment. We got so many people so desperate to make ends meet, make money, take care of money. Look, everybody wants to know, how is it possible for me not to have any bills and not to be beholden to debt because I can honestly say I don't have any debt. I have things I would like to take care of regarding my brothers and, you know, people that I owed in the past, but as far as corporations and companies and bill collectors, I don't have any of that. I haven't had any of that for quite some time. I haven't had to write a debt letter to nobody in over 10 years. I mean, there was this one company, but I decided to leave them alone. It was 200 and some dollars. I started to go ahead and check them, but I said, no, just let that junk just fall off. So how well, when you go to the Eon channel on YouTube, you'll see the 607 letter, um, 609 letter, 602 letter, whatever, which one it is. It's the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act and the Fair Credit Reporting Act. What you all don't know, and I might as well just give it to you because it's going to do you a bit of good. If you owe a debt to anyone over six months, for greater than $600, they must report the debt to the IRS on a 1099-C, and you must receive the copy. So help them out. Report the stupid debt for them. They're not doing it. So go ahead and help them out and make sure the debtor, your account, receives the recipient copy. The debtor gets the recipient copy. Help them out. And then there's other steps, but I'm not telling you that because that's company business. You can't do that. But then send that to the credit reporting bureaus. Let them prove there's an outstanding debt. Why and how can you do that? Because you're a party to the contract. You're a party to that partnership agreement. It doesn't have to be a partnership as defined by the IRS. It's a partnership as defined by the term partnership. It's a joint venture. Why? Because you have a contract with the idiots. And if it's over six months and it's over $600, then the 1099C must be filed. Now, hold on now. Go read the instructions. Go read the instructions. Because there are some caveats. I No, I did not say caveat. I said caveat, not caviar. All right. Yeah, yeah, this goes on all day. Don't worry about it. It, it don't change. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the credit letters, those debt collection letters you find online, they do work. After you send off your letters and these idiots act like you don't exist, y'all don't get it, do y'all? The Fair Credit Reporting Act and the Consumer Protection Act, putting those two acts together, like I did on the video, the one where I was traveling, you had all the background noise. Ladies and gentlemen, the only thing you have to do is now, after you send out your letters, take the idiots to small claims court for violation of of your consumer protection laws. Did you, you didn't read joint resolution? June 5th, 1933? Otherwise known as the Gold Abrogation Act? The Gold Repeal Act? Well, the Gold Repeal Act, there is an act called the Gold Repeal Act that was actually 1934, but the Gold Abrogation Act, the act to abrogate the gold clause. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you want joint resolution of June 5th, 1933. You're going to see it 
called HDR 192 because so many people was calling it HDR 192, but it is not HDR 192. It is Joint Resolution, June 5th, 1933, or the Act to Uniform the Value of the Coins and Currencies of the United States. Every eligible paper, every coin, every currency in the United States has a uniform value. What does uniform mean? Equal value. That act actually speaks of dollar for dollar. Ladies and gentlemen, every dollar is equal. They have the same value. There has never, ever, ever, ever been a value assignment to any dollar bills. A $100 bill, $20 bill, $40 bill, $128 billion bill, doesn't matter how many dollar bills you stack together, they all equal a dollar. It's called dollar for dollar, the equal value of every dollar. I always tell people, pull out a quarter, look at the back of a quarter, and it tells you that it's a quarter dollar. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no such thing. Congress never authorized anybody to make anything called a quarter of a dollar. If that was the case, you could literally tear dollars in half and give people a portion of your dollar bill because it's a quarter of a dollar. A quarter dollar is still a dollar. A penny dollar is still a dollar. A dime dollar is still a dollar. It's all dollars. They're equal in value. Go and read it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Go and find that when they took gold, an act to abrogate the gold clause, all they did was change the definition of gold. When they took gold out of the system and changed the definition of gold and what gold was, how could they give dollars any other value? They are worth less and less and less and less. So, once you understand what dollars are and what money is, because dollars are not money in the United States, go ahead, take a look. They call it the gold clause. No state shall coin anything but gold and silver coin as money. Now, pay attention. So coin, pay attention, coin, not dollar, not, not, not print. It says coin, nothing but gold and silver as money. There was no paper money back then, ladies and gentlemen. It was all metal coins. There was no paper money back then, ladies and gentlemen. It was all metal coins, precious metals, gold and silver says as money didn't say they were money it says they couldn't coin it as money everybody thinks that oh i'm buying up gold and silver because when the dollar fails i'm gonna have no it says coin as money gold and silver was never money pay attention when they coined it as money it was money if it wasn't coined as money it wasn't money pay attention Nobody reads anymore. I got something I want to show y'all. Hold on a second, okay? One second. Pay attention for a second. This young man is going to tell y'all something. I think it's important y'all hear what he has to say. Let me turn up the volume, turn up the volume on my end so y'all can hear better. One second. In a society, because of all of these different toxins known to affect brain function, we're seeing a society that not only has a lot more people of lower IQ, but a lot fewer people of higher IQ. In other words, a dumbing down, a chemical dumbing down of society. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen, I paused the wrong thing. Because they can't. Okay. We're going to bring him back so you guys can hear everything he said. And I need y'all to understand something. I meet quite a few people and they talk about, oh, you're so smart. No, I'm not. I keep telling everybody I've said this since the operation. 
126 degrees and clinically dead for 18 minutes. The amount of brain damage I suffered during that stupid operation. Everybody else should be so far behind. Man, you guys should be, literally, to me, you should all be geniuses. I can't explain it, but I can say that I can literally talk to people and I can see what he's talking about. It's not your fault if you fit that category. If you're not as smart as a light bulb. Did you say smart as a light bulb? Did you not mean bright as? No, smart as a light bulb. Why, 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 why? Because when you screw in a light bulb, it knows its place. Hold on now. When you screw in a light bulb, it knows its place. It don't move from that place unless somebody comes and interferes with it. Oh, okay. That almost makes sense. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people out there who think they're dumb, who think they're stupid. You're not dumb. You're not stupid. There is a dumbing down of our society. They're putting these stupid chemicals in the air on a massive basis. They are putting chemicals in the air. I didn't say this. They said it. Go back in the 80s. Notice how they said that they were seeding clouds. Okay, with what? Chemicals. Well, to help it rain. Yes, but what else are they seeding it with? They're putting pesticides together. What are pesticides? Chemicals. And they do spraying in neighborhoods. Because there is a mosquito infestation. Mosquitoes? Mosquitoes cause malaria. Yes, they do. But okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're splicing two videos together because Chris Unseen called and his number showed up on the phone when he called and I can't have y'all seeing his number. So I had to bring the two videos together. We're going to continue with the interview with this young man talking about how they are putting chemicals in the air. You've heard Dick Gregory and Prince talk about the same thing, but let's finish hearing him talk that the chemicals are designed to induce anger and violence. And then look around you and look at how many arguments you hear during the day, how many people are getting upset how many people are grabbing guns and shooting people for no stupid reason whatsoever? One second. There was a dumbing down, a chemical dumbing down of society. So everyone's sort of mediocre. That leaves them dependent on government because they can't excel. We have these people with lower IQ who are totally dependent. Then we have this mass of people who are going to believe anything they're told because they can't really think clearly. And very few people of a very high IQ who have good cognitive function who can figure this all out. And that's what they want. So, you know, you can kind of piece it together as to why they are so insistent and in spending so many hundreds of millions of dollars of propaganda money to dumb down society. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't understand it, y'all. Why are they doing that to society? You heard them say it. Dumbing down society to the point where people literally will tell you they don't understand. There are so many people who I talk to and I explain the simplest of things in a fashion that I think even a cockroach would understand. And they simply can't get it. I tell people there is no money but because they keep hearing the word money all the time and they have that junk in their pocket, they think that's money. They don't understand. I tell people, hey guys, you don't understand your mortgage is already paid for. So I did a video and I said, you know what y'all should do? Take them to court. Start now. Take the servicer to court. Send a letter to the servicer. Say, I want a full accounting now, and I want the accounting verified. I want somebody attesting to the accuracy of the accounting. 
I do not want a bunch of numbers on a page because I believe I don't owe you a dime. I believe you've already been paid. Just send them a letter saying that. And the moment they send you anything but what you asked for, send them another letter saying you did not provide what I asked for, the law, and send them a copy of your Truth and Lending Act statement. This was a consumer credit transaction. The law says you must provide me a verified accounting upon request. Send that to them again. If they don't send it to you that second time, send them one more final letter. It's called the administrative process. One more final letter saying, I've given you two opportunities to comply with the law. Two opportunities. And you have ignored the law. Not only do I want a full accounting, but I want you to provide proof that you have not received the funds from the Federal Reserve because this was a Federal Reserve Act transaction. They will ignore you again. Then you will do that 1099C. That's right, because they're claiming you owe a debt. And you will make them the creditor and you the debtor. Go and watch that 1099 video and do the opposite of what's said in the 1099 video on the Eon channel. It's five minutes and 16 seconds. They're the creditor. You're the debtor. And go to 1099 online and make sure the recipient gets a copy of that mail to them. And then send that to the credit reporting bureaus and say, this debt has been forgiven. Have a Coke and a smile. Now, somebody's going to say you're committing fraud, and you're going to say, oh, God, no, I'm not committing fraud. The Federal Reserve deposited money into my account. If they got a problem, then they have to go to arbitration because this is a matter for the arbitrator. Y'all understand? Start taking these fools to arbitration. They want to go to arbitration? Get them on the administrative process. Now, look, I could sit up here because it's after 2 o'clock. I know it's after 2, 2.24. I've been up for about an hour and 40 minutes after going to sleep. I went to sleep pretty early. I I didn't stay up too late. Um, yeah, I went to sleep. I had about four and a half hours of sleep. And I'll be going back to sleep in about an hour and waking up about, this is Saturday. So I'll probably make myself get up at seven and I'll start working on some documents for my people. My people! Okay. And taking care of things because this is a normal routine seven days a week ladies and gentlemen but understand something getting back to the video that i just showed you ladies and gentlemen i tell you i've always been a thinker i spent all my day thinking even today i was restless because i had so much on my mind restless because coming up with the taking the idiots to small claims court and doing that video talking about bad judges, bad police officers, bad lenders, bad servicers, taking them to small claims court because of failing to give you the information for the bad judges, police officers, and the other government officials failing to give you the information on their bond, you can take them to court for failing to provide you insurance information. The same as if you're in a vehicle accident and you have to have insurance showing that you are covered have collateral well the judges public officials must do the same thing they take an oath of office just for that reason that's why they have to take an oath of office because they take an oath so that they don't damage you why because the people of the united states are the sovereignty hold on give me a second let me show you all that now pay attention because some of y'all have gotten this wrong the first question, I put the sovereignty of the United States resides in the people. It says, in the United States, where does the sovereignty lie? In the people. The phrase, the people, that's a legal term. The people. The Constitution uses that term. The people. Okay? Now, hold on. We got another one right here. Okay? The question is asked. The people have asked, each state in the United States is sovereign in the sense that they have their own constitution and generally create their own laws. However, they still have to adhere to the federal laws and the Supreme Court, a federal court, is the highest court in the land that can overrule state judicial decisions. However, that's not the point. We're talking about where the sovereignty lies. So what does sovereignty resides in the people mean? Let's click on that one because that's the statement. 
Public sovereignty is the belief, no, it's not a belief, that ultimate authority is vested in the people themselves, expressed in the ideas of the general will. This means that the power is elected and supported by the members. The authority has a central goal in the good of the people in the mind. Um, in mind, excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's from Wikipedia. Please understand, that's not sovereignty resides in the people. That's only half the story. So let's go down here. Popular sovereignty in the United States. There is no such thing. The Constitution doesn't mention nothing about no popular sovereignty. The doctrine of sovereignty under the United States, this is a, it says doctrine, United States Supreme Court has been that, uh, whatever decisions these idiots made, that the United States sovereignty has resided in the people as a whole. That's right. It's called the collective community. Okay? Collective community or the common community. So all of these people going out there talking about their sovereign, it's not that. It's the people who are sovereign, not the person. Pay attention. Sovereignty resides in the people because supposedly the people elect officials to do their bidding. The officials are not doing that anymore. That's why they have to be bonded, ladies and gentlemen, in case they damage you, the sovereignty. A sin against you is a sin against the sovereignty of the United States. You harm one civilian, you harm them all. Pay attention. A sin against you is a sin against the sovereignty of the United States. Insurrection and rebellion is what it's actually called. Now, I, I, don't you go out there and start talking about insurrection and rebellion because you don't know much about that stuff. Look, as that video said, so many people can't simply understand basic, simple things. I know, I know, everybody wants to think they're smart. Everybody wants to think, like the guy said, I got a GAD. I got my education. Well, he didn't say education. I say education. I told you guys about the story. A corrections officer in a county jail in Arizona literally said to me, I told him, I said, because he kept bothering me every day. I was a legal guy. I did all the legal paperwork and everything. He saw me always reading case law. And so he would come to the cell and he would harass me, bang on the door, bang on the door, bang on the door all the time, trying to interrupt me. And I got up from the bunk and I said, excuse me. I said, you need to leave me alone. I said, I don't bother anybody. I mind my own business. I said, I do my exercise, read my scripture. I stay in here. I don't even come out because I don't want to be bothered with anyone. I said, but you are trying to cause me problems. You need to leave me alone. You are not on my level. Not on your level. I have you know that I have my education and I got my GAD. And ladies and gentlemen, I announced to the entire pod that I was in. Look at that, everybody. He got his GAD. I am so glad you got your GAD. And all of the officers laughed at him. From that point on, that intelligent person did not bother me again. As a matter of fact, when he came near me, he had his head down. He never, ever bothered me again. I doubt if, and, and I don't remember very much about him because he was insignificant to me. But ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe he ever spoke to me again. That humiliation and embarrassment, I can only imagine the other ones giving him a hard time. This is what I'm trying to get you all to understand. Everybody thinks that they're smart. Everybody thinks that they're educated. Everybody thinks that they're capable of learning and doing anything. Ladies and gentlemen, how could you if they're using chemicals to cause you not to be able to? How could you? How could you improve? How could you move forward? How could you manifest whom you're supposed to be if they keep 
interfering with your growth. You can't do anything about the chemicals. Now, look, I've known for several decades about chemicals and how the chemicals are designed to harm us. So I stopped eating meat. Oprah, don't you dare get me in trouble with no beef industry. I don't eat meat because of the chemicals they inject into our meat products. I stopped eating meat in 2016. Prior to that, I would go every three years. Three years, no eating meat. Then I go back to eating meat. I love my kielbasa sausage. Man, out of all the meats out there, kielbasa sausage, that's my favorite. I don't know what type of meat kielbasa is, but I love me some kielbasa. Okay, but I don't get to do kielbasa sausages no more. Because I, 2016, going on seven years, no meat. I even said to myself, well, you know, maybe I should eat meat every once in a while. No, I ain't doing that, ladies and gentlemen, because I understand the effects that has. I just canceled my health insurance on purpose. Told them, no, I opt out completely. Why? Because there's nothing these stupid doctors can do for me. As a matter of fact, I haven't gotten better. I've not taken medication. Well, they gave me a medication I was supposed to help from memory. And it had some interesting side effects. So I said, I'm not taking that junk anymore. But I don't take medication, not even for pain. First of all, they can't give me, they can't give you medication for pain. They definitely can't give me medication for pain. I'm in pain constantly. My, I'm in pain now. I've been in pain all day. I can handle the pain. I can tune the pain out, focus on something else. Before I went to sleep, I had a headache. I, I don't have headaches anymore. But I did have a headache, and it was my fault. I had a headache. It was my fault. Because I drove today to the city. About three hours worth of round-trip time. I just had to go pick up some mail and go to Home Depot, get some little parts. That's three hours, just that round trip. And I didn't do anything else. I, I should have filled up, but I didn't even fill up. So I got a half a tank. Anyway, I had my jacket on the whole time. Sleeves, everything, you know, that type of jacket. I had it on the entire time. That was my biggest mistake, everyone. Pay attention. My biggest mistake is I knew with the sun, it, it was warm today. It was in the 70s, 75, 76. But I had my jacket on in the car and the air conditioning was on, but the air conditioning wasn't on, on. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I knew I would end up having a headache. Why? Because my body doesn't regulate itself like yours does. Okay. And I knew that it would cause me a headache and I still kept the jacket on. So I had to suffer the consequences for what I knew. All it do is take the stupid jacket off. But then I thought I wouldn't be as comfortable. Well, that ended up making me not comfortable in the evening because I can't regulate my temperature like that. So in other words, I was too hot. Like Cool in the Gang said, I got to run for shelter. Got to run for shade. It's too hot. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I say this just to let all of you know. I don't take pain medication. I've learned over the years to tune, mentally tune out pain. I had no choice. After the operation, I sat up there being in pain as a result of the blood clots in my kidneys. Now, if you want to know what pain is, talk to your doctor and ask him, what type of pain could blood clots in the kidney cause? That's what they did when they fried the blood. You know, they just burnt all kind of blood cells and everything throughout my entire body. But the worst part not wasn't the brain cells that they fried in the brain. It was the kidneys. That's the pain. I promise you, if you want to experience pain, deal with kidneys. People with kidney stones will let you know exactly how much pain is pain. People with kidney stones will let you know exactly how much pain is pain. Well, 
getting back to focus and understanding. I cut the majority of the chemicals out of my life. I'm even cutting those uh, cleaning solution chemicals. I'm getting rid of all that junk. I'm going back to the natural stuff. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, all these combination of chemicals, the, the EPA, the FDA, the CDC, those ignorant mother don't care about you. They don't care about you. Allowing all of these chemicals and compositions, and they know that there are side effects for all medication. Because medication is chemicals. You don't believe me? Go and take a look. All medication is chemicals. Medicine is natural. Medication, chemical. Go ahead and take a look. As a matter of fact, Congress enacted a law that says for people who are incarcerated, they cannot demand anything but chemical composition for treatment for any ailment. Don't take my word for it. Go look it up. Now, why would they do that? Because Michael Jackson said, they don't really care about us. Okay. So, the suggestion would be, pay attention to the chemicals. Look at your food. Look at the amount of chemicals in your food. The more ingredients in your food, the likelihood that there's more chemicals. The longer that list of ingredients is, the more likelihood is that there are a bunch of chemicals that are unhealthy. So be careful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we started the video out, the original video talking about debt, talking about uh, people saying how they didn't want any debt, start with taking care of your credit report. Grab your credit report and start writing your debt letters. You can get free debt letters all over the internet. You can even go to SACOM911.com, the PDF section. There are all kind of debt letters there. Just take it and send it. What is it going to hurt you? Within three months' time, most of that junk is off your credit. The ones who want to be stubborn, that's where you get them. You ask them for the accounting. Go back and listen to that information. Clear your debts, people. Stop worrying about paying this bill and that bill. You're going to get that taken care of, but get rid of that debt first. That will increase your credit rating. Now, see, I can't increase my credit rating because I don't buy anything on credit. So my credit is just clear. There's nothing on my credit. Oops. Because that's the way it has to be. That's the way it has to be. Just that simple. I'm sorry, I was just thinking about something else. Uh, sorry, and that's the other thing. I want to let you guys know, when I'm having conversations with people, they don't even understand that I am actually having five or six different conversations in my head while I'm talking to someone. And people call it multitasking. No, I don't call it multitasking. I call it just thought process because I'm extrapolating the conversation and then taking key words and remembering and focusing on things that I've done, been thinking about, uh, been focusing on, been trying to put together. And for me, it works. I cannot exist without having that mindset. But the problem is, most people have a hard time with it. So I'll say this again. Fighting this system now, as corrupt as the system is, and the system is corrupt, because judges will go out of their way to ruin things for you. They will make sure that you don't get what you're trying to get. As I tell you, the only way to make sure a judge understands is to get some act right. How do you get some act right from a judge? Does anybody know? File your complaint against the judge. Don't file your uh, complaint with no stupid uh, judicial misconduct board. That's an administrative body. You don't want to file no complaint with judicial misconduct. First thing you want to do is complain about the judge to the presiding judge of the court and the administrator for the court. Every court has a presiding administrator or a chief administrator. 
because the judicial branch, executive branch, and the congressional branch all have three branches for each. A judicial branch has a judicial department, an administrative department, and a rule department or legislative department. Congress has a administrative department, administrative law department with Congress. Then they have a judicial department. See, that's why you can have a legislative court. Then they have their judicial department. Then they have their legislative department. And that's why they can oust somebody like McCartney and the, 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 the Santos person. Because that's their administrative department getting rid of them. Okay. Then you have the executive branch that has its administrative department, the various departments of that agency. Then you have the so-called judicial department, known as uh, administrative courts. And then you have the legislative department, known as orders, sanctions, uh, what is it? executive branch do orders declarations proclamations okay each department because they claim that they have the right to do that the constitution doesn't give them the right but it also doesn't prohibit them from doing that and thus they are using the technicality that it is not prohibited for them to do that you just have to understand how none of those apply to you the constitution doesn't give the judicial branch the right to rule administratively over anybody. The judicial branch never had the right to rule. So having the courts issue a ruling is unconstitutional. The courts don't rule over the people, ever. The people are the sovereign. How can Congress rule over the people? How can the president rule over the people? It's impossible. The people are the sovereignty. The sovereignty resides in the people. How can Congress ever, ever, ever issue a law that regulates the people? Again, Congress cannot, the courts cannot, but you have to claim to be a part of the sovereignty of the United States. Not a sovereign citizen, but part of the sovereign citizenry of the United States. Or sovereign civilianry of the United States. All you have to do is say, I am one of the people. I am part of the sovereignty of the United States. Oh, you are a sovereign citizen? You ignorant, how dare you? I said, I am one of the people. I did not say I am one of the person. I am one of the people, the collective group who represent the sovereignty of the United States. Are you saying that you don't acknowledge and recognize that the people are the sovereignty of the United States? that the sovereignty resides in the people as a collective community, a collective group, as already been determined by the Supreme Court and so many other courts? They'll shut up at that point. No more sovereign citizen claims. Now you will get some act right. Now you ask, what authority do you have to rule over any civilian? Just ask, where is that jurisdiction? Remember, police officer pulls you over and asks you for license, registration, and insurance. Why does he ask you for those three things? He's establishing jurisdiction. He doesn't realize that in his head. He's establishing jurisdiction by commanding you to produce proof that he has a right to regulate you. just that simple that's why you have that department of motor vehicles thing so what we're getting ready to do is we're getting ready to help our people the automobile people the fourth amendment people put together something to take the dmv to court yeah 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 yeah. you guys will have that in less than a week they're going to take the DMV to court in small claims court. Simple lawsuit, literally a simple lawsuit. Well, they'll finally have it documented that they don't need to register their vehicle and that they don't need to sign a contract in order to travel. That's what a 
when you go to the DMV and you sign all that paperwork and you get that license and all of that stuff, that's a contract. A license is a contract, and most people don't know that. Hey, look, guys, I've taken you all for too long. Uh, look at that. 28 minutes plus the other minutes on the one that I'm splicing together. Let me let you all go. Again, this is the stuff. You see how many subjects I've covered just in this one segment of this video plus the segment of the other video and then bringing both of them together. That's the process of a mind. Again, it's 2.48 in the a.m. Been up since 12.58. This is what I go through every single night. And if it's a day like today where there was so much going on, then the thinking just continues and inues and inues and inues and inues and inues and your mamas and, you know, that type of stuff. All right. Have a good day, everybody. We got to go.